start of another bits of video. Um, amusingly, I was looking back through some of my old videos uh, because I have other accounts, uh, YouTube accounts, that don't have subscribers and I use them to look at things. And then when I've been banned from commenting on my normal channel, which happens often because I dare to speak the truth, you know, there were there was two guys that were... Um, they had lots of crimes, let's put it that way. Um, and they were being chased by the police in a car. And they crashed into other people and um, injured a number of other people. Unfortunately, they both survived. And I said, well, pity they weren't killed. But apparently you're not allowed to say that because the truth is not allowed on YouTube. So they'll probably delete this video. Um, anyway, what I was going to say was that... Uh, I was looking back at a number of my videos, and it seems I, I always started them with, right. <laughs> Don't ask me why, I just did. Um, at least I wasn't saying basically, basically. Oh, and Church House Classics, thank you for the shout out. Um, those of you that uh, watch Church House Classics, his latest one with the uh, uh, Range Rover he's working on, He's doing a, a something on the exhaust manifold, and I think it's about 11 minutes in, something like that, I'm not sure. And he says basically, basic, basically, ba ba and he, he says it a number of times, and then he says, thanks, Jagvet. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, Just Classics, for the shout-out. Um, I tried to comment, but of course I can't at the moment, because I'm banned for saying the idiot's criminal should have died. However, that was a lot of prattling about nothing. Um, but, hey... You watch my channel, you know you get that. Um, my fuel gauge doesn't work. My fuel gauge says the tank is full. My fuel gauge is a liar. <laughs> However, I've got to try and figure out what the fuck's going on. Um, I tested the um, feed to the fuel gauge, and I get my um, voltage. I can't remember whether it was 10 or 12 now. Um, but anyway, I got, I got voltage to the gauge from the voltage stabiliser. I then believe what should happen is the voltage passes through this gauge and down to the sender unit. The sender unit then um, has a rheostat in it and that rheostat will then make a reading between ground and the position of the float on the rheostat and that will then send a signal to the gauge and the gauge will read what fuel level you have. There is also um, a connection on it, or which is a low fuel um, level warning light, I believe. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not lying there, but I'm sure somebody will correct me if I am. And yes, I could go and look at the car, but I'm not going to. Um, so I'm still trying to figure out what the f is going on. Uh, it's unusual for the gauge to be stuck on full like that. So I'm wondering if there's a problem inside. I don't think there is. However, I don't know. I'm going to have to take this apart. But before I do that, I am led to believe, and um, maybe some of you know different, but it'll be too late by the time I've uh, put this video out, that the water temperature gauge uses the same type of resistor inside. So I'm going to disconnect the... Um, wires that are on the temperature gauge because I know the temperature gauge works. It's one of the few gauges that does. Oil pressure doesn't work. Neither does uh, the alternator one. But I don't think any of the faults are related. I think they're all individual faults. Uh, the oil pressure one uh, could be the sender unit. Could be. I've still got the original sender unit on there. Um, the Hang on, where's my brain cell going? Oh, the, the, the battery ammeter amete, um, gauge. Um, it's probably not working because I've got it wired wrong. Or because I've switched to an alternator, I haven't done something I should have done. I don't know. Again, something else I've yet to figure out. But I still want to figure out, you know, one, one, one what is it they say? One step at a time. One stitch at a time, one fuck up at a time. So um, I'm going to do deal with the fuel. Let's make sure I know how much fuel I have or don't have 
in the car. The other thing that I'm going to do at the same time is I'm going to start the car and see if my alternator is actually charging. That I mentioned yesterday in my other video that uh, that's how you do it. You just check it on the battery and if the battery is receiving a charge of around 14 volts then you're good to go. If not, that means I've got to get another fucking alternator and that will piss me off. Why? Because I bought this one as a working alternator many, many months ago, maybe even a year or more, um, that came off of a Mark II and was supposedly working. Uh, I believed them. If not, then that's, uh, well, that's an $80 paperweight. Well, it's not because I'll have to exchange it for one. Ah. Uh, pisses me off anyway that we will um, deal with okay let's uh, let's move on <clears throat> I uh, will show you as much as I can on my trying to sort out this problem first thing I will do as I said is I'm going to swap the gauges and see if this gauge actually functions at all or even if the water gauge functions as a fuel gauge I know my for my fuel tank my full tank isn't fuel there you go so I will definitely deal with that. Uh, well, that's tomorrow morning for me and in the next few moments for you. As you can see, I have the wiring gauge, a uh, gauge, Jesus Christ. I have the wiring diagram out. Um, I do have a couple of cars to do next week. I have a Porsche coming in for a uh, AC ventilation problem, which I'm going to have a look at. I've made the customer no promises. Um, Porsches are not something I'm familiar with, but hey, car's a car in my book. Uh, then the week after that, I've got a Ford Ranger and a Mercedes uh, E320. The Mercedes you've seen on many of my videos, it's uh, one of my regular customers. He has an AC problem as well. Yeah, um, I was this week meant to do a Toyota, uh, the big ass truck, Titan steering rack but it's a four by four the job is an absolute nightmare it's too big to fit in my garage so i have to do it on the driveway and here currently the temperatures range in the mid to high 90s and i'm not going to be laying on my back underneath that truck doing it and i've already apologized to the customer because there are limits to what i'm going to do these days i'm not going to kill myself for the sake of a few dollars right enough of that prattling now let's get on and see if I can figure out why the fuck the fuel gauge isn't working. Now it could be that the fuel gauge is fucked because I've never seen one stuck on full. Okay, with my hand up against my rear door on the right hand side of the vehicle you can see how far the wheel is protruding on this side. Let's just move in a little closer here. Again, I'm just using my hand as a guide to see the width. Now I have measured down here between this edge and the tire, both sides it's inch and three quarters. My only concern is that the axle is too far to the left side of the vehicle so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to deal with that yet well I know how I'm going to deal with it if it's wrong that's that rod but I'm just trying to figure out here hmm so I to see that gap there I guess I could measure there at an angle somehow and then do the same on the other side and then see if I need to pull the axle to the left or push it to the right. Let me have a look on the other side. Let's go for a walk. Okay, here we are on the other side. To me, at the moment, it looks like it might be a little further this way. Let's have a look now. 
that gap there that's the gap isn't it that I'm interested Oop, hang on a second that's the gap I'm interested in let's see now uh, how can I best measure this I mean this is <coughs> this isn't precision decision this is ballpark how can I do this I'm, I'm not Now I've got a straight edge that I can take from the center of the wheel to the arch bodywork. Let's do that. Okay, um, it was very hard to try and film what I was talking about without me being a cunt. Okay, what I'm <clears throat> attempting to do here, and I've already done it, but I'm trying to video it for you guys. Um, <clears throat> I want to get an idea of how far the wheel or the rear axle is this way or that way. Um, and I, yeah, I'm sure there's better methods, but this works for me. I'm just aligning the straight edge here with the top of my wheel, then using my stick of inches, measure it to the bodywork. This says an inch and an eighth. And on the other side, it's an inch. So I am one eighth too far in one direction. And that one direction is this way. So I can try and pull it back that way. And I may well just give it a few turns to see if I can do that. Um, I'm not that far off. That was my big concern initially with the, uh, the, the spats, that it was going to rub against the tyres, but having taken it for a ride now, things have settled, which I'm very pleased about, and now I will probably um, tighten everything up, but I'm, I'm still going to go through the procedure of making sure I undo things and do them up. Um, and by that I mean like the, the, the leaf springs undo the nuts and bolts that hold the rubber bushes so that if it needs to lower itself because of the weight of the car now because it's got everything in it with the exception of the interior um, it'll settle that last little bit so my plan is to loosen off and everything else is loose with the exception of the rear uh, bolt on the leaf spring uh, and they are I, I can never say this word half epileptic Epileptic, no, uh, they don't have fits, you know. <laughs> Go on, you say it. I dare you. I double dog dare you. Epileptic, yeah, it's half a spring. <laughs> so, um, once I've undone those bolts, or loosened them, not undone them, loosened them, gone around the block a few times, and yes, you will see that, uh, or, well, at least of me driving around the block. Um, that, oh shit, uh, the weekend's coming, so it might be a little tricky to do it at the weekend. We'll see. Um, not sure when I'm going to push this video out now. Uh, so now I'm, I'm very happy that I'm only eighth of an inch out. I next, I next, Jesus Christ, I need some new teeth. These ones are fucking useless. Uh, well, they're English, what do you want? Um, I will put the arches on, the spats on, and see how we look, and take it from there. That's tomorrow, for me, as always. 
So I'm going to leave the camera here and we'll come back.